There we go. And let's take a look at how everyone did with arms. This is everything, right? Let me refresh real quick. Here we go. All right. So we'll start uh, up at the top with Kayla and work our way down through the folders and then do the loose ones. Kayla, how'd it go? <clears throat> uh, it, it was kind of hard at first, but I figured out like where to put the muscles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just taking a quick look up here, slight differences in the pose just right off in that uh, the shoulder needs to be a bit higher up. You've got the deltoid kind of right over the armpit in here where it needs to raise up a lot higher. Um, kind of like how the, the pecs and the deltoid are kind of like flowing into one another. That's kind of cool. You can sort of see the striations where it starts to dive a little bit lower. But yeah, really this big mass kind of does combine sometimes, especially in this, you know, overarm kind of flexing position. So it does make sense. Um, just make sure that you know that the, the pecs don't like directly drive right into the deltoid and sort of cut off their side by side. But other than that, I would say it's, it's okay. Um, same thing's kind of happening with your bicep here. The, the bicep is here, but you've got it driving all the way into the elbow area and maintaining mass, whereas it really does round out and sort of pinch back down before you get to the forearm. So make sure you, you have that cleft there between forearm and bicep. Oh, okay. Make sense? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the things that the video showed, which I thought was really good, is if you look at this guy's forearm, um, the shortcut shape you can use for the entire forearm is sort of like a turkey drumstick. So you got like this cleft in the middle on the, um, on the flexor side, right? The inner side and it's wider at the top, thinner at the bottom, more square at the wrist, and much more mass further down. So that would be something to bear in mind when you're drawing it, is that all of the mass in the forearm tends to be concentrated right after the elbow, and then this comes down to a much more fluted square position further on. So it looks like you got the bone there, but we need to concentrate the, the meat of the forearm a little bit further down. Cool. Yeah. Let's take a look over here. Okay. So yeah, he's kind of twisting it behind his back a little bit, which is distorting some of the shapes a little bit. You've got this really sharp deltoid shape, which is not really happening on his arm right now. It's sort of flattening out and ending at about this position, uh, but you're kind of making the point extend down the arm. When you look at the deltoid from the side, like if you were to just look at their shoulder, it is pointy. When you look at it from other directions, it's not necessarily pointy. So it's a shield shape. It does widen out a bit. So this part that you're indicating right here might be right here if this thing wasn't twisted, or it might be a little bit further on, but it's not really making that shape right now is all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, make sure that you concentrate the mass of the, of the tricep higher up the arm and flatten it out as it approaches the elbow. It does go all the way down to attach to the back of the elbow also. So it contributes to the shape of the elbow by extending this fascia or this uh, um, whatever you call it, the tendon area uh, tr of, the, of the tricep all the way down to the elbow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got the basic shape of the forearm here. Um, still need to thin it pretty significantly at the wrist. Cool. Okay. Let's see. That's just one of them. Let me quickly look at some others. There it goes. Wasn't coming into focus for a second there. Okay. Yeah. So more more mass around the elbow, right? As in the the bone shapes on both the sides and back, and keep the bicep away from the elbow cleft, right? It stops well before it gets to that point. So that's just something I'm seeing a, a few times here. Hmm. What's what's this secondary bump here? On the bicep. Is is the the 
Trail? Um... Tricep? Yeah. That would be the that would be the wrong side then. Oh, okay. I think you flipped him around on this one. So you're treating the inside of the arm as tricep. That's actually bicep, right? Tricep is on the outside. Oh. Yeah, so now I can see that the colors are reversed. So this one, you got it backwards. So just be careful about that. Okay. So this, this one's the correct way around. Yeah, and it makes a lot more sense like this. Like you can sort of see a flatter, longer shape and a more truncated sort of um, stepped shape for the bicep. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there's some detail here that you're missing, like in the armpit, this turn upward, I'm not really seeing. You've just kind of drawn a straight line to kind of the center of the, the humerus, but that's not really what's going on. He's both lifting and twisting his arms. So you've got this twisting shape happening here on both sides. So you need to include that. Okay. There's a lot more that happens than just point to point connections. All this mass has, you know, density, it has thickness, it has direction. So use your observations to really flesh that out. Cause literally that's what we're doing is adding flesh to these basic structures. Um, also observe the elbow shape. It's rather pointy and can get even uh, more sharp than this. Like this is a 90 degree bend, but it can go much further in than that. Um, you're losing your elbows because you're not putting the bones all the way out there. Okay, so don't don't lose the elbows. You need them. Okay. Let's see. Whoa, these arms got really long on this guy. I don't know what happened with proportions here, but they're like very, very long suddenly. Uh-huh. I try by to try to size that. Probably would have been a good idea to draw the pelvic shape in on this one so that you could get proportions. But these ones just kind of got away from you. Like they started rapidly increasing in size past this point. Whereas the shoulder area looks fairly under control, but forearms and, and arm and hands just got huge on that one. Uh, same thing's kind of happening on this one. Number twelve. Uh, these ones look fine. Oh, you're oh you're counting one per arm. I was like, why is this numbered twice? Like, okay, yeah, left and right arm. That's fine. So yeah, like on eleven, twelve, it's happening as well. Um, if I ignore the oval, then it's almost fine. But the oval is way too tall and thin. If that's supposed to be the thoracic mass, um, on these two it looks a little bit better. But again, that oval is kind of crazy in its sizing. It can be a little bit tough to tell on these really beefy guys, though. Let's see. Just checking. So we can see a little bit of tricep right here poking around behind the bicep, but it looks like you've got it very far down on the humerus. It's got to be much higher up, and your deltoids are kind of sneaking down the arm progressively going far too far down. Remember that the joint is right in this area here and the deltoid fits around it like shoulder pads. So if this is your joint here, this, this circle, center the deltoid on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the joint. Mm -hmm. Then center the deltoid on that area. All right, um, I'm not seeing more than one muscle on the on the upper arm for this one. What muscle are you saying blue is? It's, uh, it's the middle one. The brachialis? Yeah, the brachialis. Okay, and you're saying the only visible muscle is brachialis? Okay, this is how big the brachialis is. The bicep and tricep are much, much larger. Right? Brachialis is this tiny little strip between the two. 
So that right there, we could we could say this is Brachialis. This is Brachialis. I'm not entirely sure that's true, but we'll say he's got the biggest Brachialis in the history of man, and he's he's done it. He's really worked that out. But then this big lobe and this big lobe, those have got to be the other neighboring muscles, right? Bicep on the inside, tricep on the outside. The, the back and front, tricep, bicep, bicep, tricep, for sure, okay? So that's something about the upper arm is that you're almost never going to have neither of those visible. I mean, it would, it would be virtually impossible. Um, you're almost certainly gonna have both of them visible no matter what angle you're looking at even if you're looking dead smack in the back of it and looking at um, tricep, you're probably gonna see some bicep sneaking around one of the sides, either left or right. And even if you're looking square at the top of the arm at the bicep, it's pretty likely you're gonna see a little bit of tricep around either side. At the very least, you'll start to see the flesh and bone um, at the elbow, which is contributing to that big blocky shape. Okay? Yeah. So you, you got to have either bicep or tricep or both. You may not have brachialis if we're looking at the inside of the arm. Oh, that muscle line really caught me there. Which one? Uh, the, the this one in the middle between the two? Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure that that's brachialis. I'm, I'm not used to seeing it so developed, but it does flow right back down into... Um, the brachioradialis, so I, I think that's that's what it must be, this kind of ribbon um, down the inside of this elbow area. Yeah, I mean, there's actually pretty clearly one, two, three lobes, so I assume that's what that must be. Okay. Let's see this guy. He got a lot of veins. Yeah. Yeah. So again, here, upper arm, we wanna make sure that we've got bicep, nice big front and center, tricep, back, brachialis, middle. Um, not really following the various colors here. Is blue bicep? Yeah, the blue bicep. And I have a little nibble on the bicep in color. Okay, so this is in front of your elbow joint. So you've put your bicep all the way down here. So it's way too far down. Then you've got, this is tricep again, right? Yeah. So yellow, tricep would be this one on the top here. Oh. So th they're getting kind of all mixed up and, and sort of mixed around. Did you have the, the charts nearby? I mean to identify which muscle is which. Did you have a chart so that you could look at it and then compare it to the photograph? No. You, you should really should do that. So th those for sure were up here on the module and not just this one, but a few others, right? This is a more realistically proportioned human being with all of them labeled as well. You really should have the anatomy chart so that you can identify positively which is which especially when you're first learning it, okay? Yeah. More anatomy chart, because things are kind of sliding all over the place. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, do you look on the last one? Oh, what about? Yeah. Um, um, wait, oh, this one, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure I knew which, you, which one you were talking about. Oh, this one. Yeah. What about this one? Yeah. I look at the muscles. I, 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 I saw, saw about it and I pay attention to the muscle and figure. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. What are you saying? Um, I, I, 
like focus on the muscles and where the muscles go. Oh, you mean like you use the anatomy chart for this one? I guess. Okay. Good. Do do that every time. <laughs> That's what you should do. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Maria. How's it going? It's going okay. The okay. first one I did, I didn't know the colors. Um, and I got a little, I tried to work with it. But the other ones after that, I got the colors right. <laughs> okay. This person is so skinny. That's a really tough one to start with. Like you can't hardly see any definition on her. I think that you've got a number of them correct, but some of them are not. Like this is the peck for the front of the armpit, but you're kind of terminating that muscle right here, which is too soon. It needs to go deeper into the tissue between the others before it can terminate like that. But yeah, that's a, that's a really hard one to start off with, I gotta say. It looks like you got, yeah, the the flexor, correct. Let's see, and this one, which is the uh, brachioradialis. That's what you're indicating with blue, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, you got that one. And I mean, she doesn't have like developed bicep or anything, but is green bicep? Uh, yeah, uh, tricep is green, red was bicep. If, mm, Okay, then on this one, that's correct. But on this one, it would be backwards. Okay. So her bicep is facing us. Her I tricep is facing away. Trying to figure out which direction she was going. Yeah. Around so much. Yeah, and it's a small picture. She doesn't have a lot of muscle mass, so it's really hard. So, But yeah, I mean, just based on the rotation of her arms, I would say bicep is on this side, tricep is on the back side. Uh, let's look at the guy that's got more obvious muscle. He's probably easier to tell. Um, yeah, so you got red clearly identified as bicep. Both sides make sense. Tricep right there. Brach uh, sorry, brachialis, not brachioradialis, between the two. Got to be in there. Maybe we see it, maybe we don't. Definitely has to be in there. Um, then we've got, okay, forearm. Something's missing on the right-hand side. So the left-hand side looks pretty good. You've got the wrapped one, two forms here. This side though, I'm not seeing the one, two forms. I'm only seeing one direction, I guess. You see what I'm talking about? So I'm talking about, um, let me show you the picture right here. Um, this would be pronator teres and brachioradialis, right, wrapping. So I'm not really seeing pronator teres coming around this side. Okay. Okay. So that's what we're, we're missing there. You got the underlying other one though, um, for the, uh, I think it's the extensors, the, the yellow. Or okay. no, that would have to be flexors. We're on the flexor Both side. Flexors and extensors were the pink. Extensors are pink, yeah. Okay, so you got the, the flexors, but just not the brachioradialis. I think that means on this side, yeah, we need pronator teres on this one as well, wrapping around. So that's the one that creates the, the characteristic inner elbow cleft shape. Okay. So we might be missing that one throughout. Yeah, I, I didn't realize there was another muscle there. <laughs> okay. You've, you've actually beefed up her arm a little bit, but you're correctly identifying the ways in which each one of these areas should bulge. But yeah, that's cool. We can now see more muscular development. A little bit more on her latissimus. I don't know why it's so far out there. It looks crazy, but it comes like all the way out to here. So a little bit more and let it dive down late. Okay, let's see some more. Okay, here's a relative normal looking person. Actually two relatively normal looking people. So let's see, yeah, bicep makes sense. Uh, make sure that the bicep dives down early into the elbow area. It really does leave off its mass pretty quickly and then just kind of become skin and tendon down there in the cleft between. So don't don't extend it all the way down to the to the cleft itself. Give it that inward sweep. Um, I was I was wondering about that. Does it end 
at the actual um does it end at the elbow inside the elbow or does it end with the it ends on the other bone but the other bone? but the bulging part the part that we see that stops way up here oh, okay. right so right about here this bulging part stops essentially and then it becomes a tendon where it's going to connect to forearm bones i'm not actually sure which one it may be both but the bulging squarish part right is pretty pronounced and on both sides this side dives in this side it dives in okay huh? and it creates a pretty characteristic shape uh let's see tricep makes sense to me going all the way down to the elbow that's good Got a nice straight line from elbow to wrist, which is good. That is the ulnar, I always forget the name of it, but ulna cleft or something like that. Uh, cool. So then what is the, the peach ones would be uh, flexor, or sorry, extensors. And the uh, flexors are yellow. What about the blue? Is that the pronator or brachialis? Uh, the, the purple that connects from the top is the brachialis and then that like greenish minty one is the uh brachioradialis cool yeah you got that one that one looks great to, where thumbs were, to remember that's where it leads off to mm -hmm. and there's a, a nice shape that's created on the forearm in the elbow cleft every time with that muscle it's visible on just about everybody because it's in a very characteristic placement so that's a really good one to remember um one weird thing just happening on your forearm with the um, yellow group, that's the flexor group, is that you've got mass concentrated way down the wrist instead of up. So make sure that mass is concentrated way higher up the forearm, uh, and then it will look fine. Okay. Kind of how you have in this next one, here. Yeah, just like that. It's actually happening on this arm too. Just hard to identify. Cool, very good. Okay, yeah. All this looks like pretty much in order. Let's keep looking. What's he doing? Is he like diving on snow or something? That really hurt. Okay. Taking a look, great. We can just see pronator teres right here. So whereas you've got this one and that one looks fine, we're missing that one. Okay. So it's the other one that would wrap around. Okay. Cool. Yeah, mostly looking good. Same sorts of things happening. Just make sure that the emphasis on where the bulge is is higher up the forearm. But in general, yeah. Do you have any questions? No, uh, I tried to look at the pictures as much as possible to, to figure out where the muscles, what, what they were doing. <laughs> cool. Uh, don't overcomplicate the bicep. Um, what you're attributing to bicep here is probably something else. Skin, a different I muscle group. What that extra thing was that, what, what that was. Because I know normally the the um, pecs go up. Mm -hmm. and sort of, they go sideways rather than going up. So yeah. I'm kind of confused at why there was a cleft there. <laughs> um, that Honestly, that could be part of the, the tendon of the, the pecs creating that cleft, but... I don't know, I'm feeling like on myself, like what what creates that exactly? Mostly I get it on the chest side, not on that side, but this could be due to like perspective. Some interaction between deltoid and pec. But remember that when we're studying the muscles, we're not studying anything that's really super flexible or malleable. Muscles are pretty tight typically. So this may not be anything to do with muscle and more to do with fat skin that sort of thing okay, okay. i was just i couldn't figure out which muscle it was or what where it was why it was doing that i mean yeah so pecs up here but that would be on this side and then folding uh deltoid up here bicep right next to it but it's tough to say it's tough to say which one that could be um maybe none of them maybe just be skin and fat and stuff or i don't really think it's fat on this guy probably more like skin you know skin's got to fold somewhere okay great all right very good thank you stacy 
Okay. Stacy's here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Hello. Okay, so we got bicep, tricep, deltoid, and two different groups. We're losing a bit of elbow. A lot of these combine and overlap in the elbow area, so it's really important to have that interaction happening. Um, don't end them before the elbow. Most of them have to cross over the elbow area in order to function. So don't don't lose the mass in that area. Huh? Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of happening a bunch of times. So this one looks particularly weird because the stretch that would be, denote the armpit in the, the pecs is at a different angle from the arm itself, which usually wouldn't be the case because that's going to reach into the middle of the, the muscle masses of the arm. So that's a little bit odd. Yeah, and generally the same sort of thing, like don't, don't neglect the, the elbow area. All of this stuff overlaps and interlocks in that elbow area. Okay. I can I can definitely tell bicep tricep deltoid though. You got those three. Um we're losing a lot of mass. Hmm? Yeah, I the muscles of the upper arms are more characteristic and individual, which is part of that reason. And in the lower arm they create more of a compound shape. So really in the lower arm what you what you really want to remember in general is just that there is a bulge on the um, upper portion of it near the elbow. There's a wrapping sort of formation that creates a cleft on the inner part of the forearm. And then it comes down to a sort of bowling pin or chicken leg shape, um, which is square once we meet the wrist. So if we're going to generalize it in any way, that would be the way it would go. Um, with the one extra, I would I'd normally say that there is a hard line created from elbow to the pinky side of the wrist, and that would be the ulna. Okay. okay. Did you have trouble with this one, or was this just like? Yeah. Yeah, and in that case, that's what the chart is for, really, is that we say, if we're looking at the underside, we know we're looking at flexors. If we're looking at the top, we know we're looking at extensors. And then there's going to be a few surface um, shadows and characteristics that can be explained with like brachioradialis and pronator teres or the ulna or something like that, depending on what side we're looking at. All right. Do you have any questions or anything? Uh, no. no. All right. Thank you. James. James is like working or something every time we have class. He's never here. But we'll look at his stuff, give him good review. Kid. Okay. That's a kid. That's a beefy kid. Let's see. So I can see individually picked out all these different colors to denote where they are. They kind of make sense. Let me see. So for a kid, yeah, I don't know how much muscular development we would have. Let's see, so we've got tricep, biceps not doing anything in that, but it looks like it's hyperextended. Proportions are getting a little weird on that arm. And then I'm noticing, I'm just now noticing every forearm is kind of bisected in two, which doesn't really make sense. So in this one, where he's doing like this atlas kind of pose, the inner arm is going to be one of those groups, not two. That's going to be the flexors all across there. Um, the blue shape, what would that be? I think he's saying the... I think it's supposed to be the pronator. The pronator, yeah. So pronator goes from the pinky side of the elbow and wraps across. So I think it's going the wrong direction then. So it'd have to start on the outer corner of the elbow and then go across this direction. And it would be intercepted by the other one, which is the brachioradialis, goes from the thumb side of the elbow and towards the thumb. So is this, 
I guess in this pose, I can't quite tell what the angle of the hand is. If the hand is facing towards us, then this would be slightly rotated. If the hand is facing towards the bicep, then it's straight, but we would be looking at the side of it. So one way or the other, something's going on there. And then a lot of these poses are the same. The palm is facing his face. His face? Okay, then it would be unrotated. So parallel would be true, except the yellow would need to extend much farther around this, and the pronator teres would have to wrap in this direction. Um, diagonal from lower left to upper right. That would be the thing. Um, and then this one, by comparison, would be rotated. So whereas that one would not be and facing away from us, this one would now be rotated. So if this palm was facing towards the face, they would be parallel. But now green should be wrapping from the far side to the nearer side is what we should be saying. So yeah, each time I'm seeing the forearm bisected like half and half, and there's no way that in all of these different poses that's happening every time. So be careful um, then, James, to make sure that you know where the, the defining line is between extensors and flexors, because I think maybe you're confused about that. If we take a look here, here's brachioradialis, right? And then all of these are extensors until we hit the ulna. And that ulna creates a nice sharp line from elbow to pinky side wrist. Then it's flexors, and flexors cover the entire surface underneath until we get to the pronator teres, which is this last one. So brachioradialis and pronator teres make a cleft that if the palm is facing the bicep, that cleft does bisect. Right? The only other time that it bisects perfectly is on the pinky side on the outside. So pinky side where the ulnar cleft is, right here. Then we've got extensors, flexors. So those two times it can happen, but it looks like it's happening every time right now. Let's see this other one. Yeah. I'm just seeing like yellow green each and every single time. It can't be all of those. Nice Wolverine. <laughs> um, that's a little bit weird for the bicep also. Based on that pose, hands hooked into pants or into pockets, the biceps would be facing the chest. They would be on the inner surface. The tricep would be on the outside and then the um, brachialis would be in the in-between. So yeah, this one doesn't make any sense down here. That's fine. This one, we'd have to see brachioradialis here. This is actually fine. Yeah. So sometimes getting a little bit wibbly wobbly, like not quite sure what's what. Uh, also, be sure like you're kind of stopping your colors at the armpit. Remember the armpit is created by those incoming muscle groups, right? The pecs and on the back, the latissimus indicate that because you're kind of like just drawing in a quote unquote armpit without knowing what the muscle group is or at least without indicating strongly that that's what that muscle group is cool all right thank you james eric hey. how's it going good good okay so we got deltoid bicep tricep um the yeah, tricep not quite as uniform. Make sure the mass is towards the top and it skinnies out towards the bottom. Okay. Almost doing it here. Just make sure that that lump is higher. Higher up. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. So yellow is brachioradialis. Oh, the flexors group? Yeah. Okay. So the, the flexor group covers the whole inner surface. It's all of these. Right? So everything on the inner wrist side from that same sort of inner side of the elbow, all of that's flexors. So you've got what looks like an S-curving shape, which it really can only be brachioradialis, maybe some of the extensors. They kind of do that too. Okay. 
So make sure if you're if you're denoting as uh, flexor, it has to be on the inner wrist. And this one, I don't think that's inner wrist. Otherwise, his arms broke. Right? He would have twisted that towards camera, and that would really hurt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, you're you're kind of doing the same thing James was doing in that you're bisecting the forearm every time the same way. And each one of these has a different rotation, so that can't be happening the same exact way. I think I drifted away and not looked up the notes, but then after I was like, no wait, this looks wrong. Let me follow the notes. Right. So this doesn't look bad or you know, the arm is misplaced. Yeah. Shapes here look okay, and the way that you're you're denoting the difference between muscles looks pretty accurate here. Um, forearm shape looks okay, but that's probably not how the muscles are being distributed at that rotation. So if I'm reading this correct, this is a palm down, um, sort of resting the arm on a on a chair or knee or something like that. It means that a yeah, knee, okay. So it means we'd mostly be looking at extensors with probably brachioradialis on the very top, and that would be about it. We might have the chance to see a little bit of the ulnar um, cleft right here at the bottom, maybe a tiny, tiny sliver of flexor, but probably just, probably not. Right. So yeah, the, the groups here in the forearms were pretty confusing. So use the anatomy charts, try to keep them straight that way. Um, the upper arm stuff should be a bit easier. You're getting weird shapes on this one. You had it right. Yeah, that one that was my uh, hard time on that one. Okay. When I was looking at the body, I was like, oh wait. What were they doing on that one? Like leaning, I wanna say. Nine and 10, oh, you got your references. Yeah. Nine? Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a foreshortening perspective issue. That's the thing. We're looking directly at the elbow. So we've got one cylinder coming right at us, one cylinder going away from us, and the knee is pushing on the, on the meat and raising it up in the center there. That's why you're getting that effect. So that's what's going on is that we've got perspective, force being applied. Actually, you can see it on the opposite side, kind of cool. The knee shoving the mass up higher right there. And so it's just kind of a difficult angle and compound effect. We're really just looking directly at um, tricep here with a tiny bit of bicep or brachialis visible here. And the rest of it is like elbow, deltoid. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a perspective thing. We need those basic tubes first. You got your elbow preserved, but remember that bone that you're drawing underneath, that is the elbow. So this, this nodule is that bone. So no need to, to extend it past the bone. Draw the bone as far as you need it to go, because that's where that nodule comes from. All right. Huh? Cool. Any questions or anything? Uh, no. I think you've answered the few that we've gone through. Okay. Oh, this one is real weird too. Yeah. Yeah. I missed it the first time, but yeah. Yeah. I'm like, he's gonna find it out, and I wanna listen. Now I did. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh oh. Starlet. No stuff. You're here, but no, no work. Should I? No? Should I, should I like, wait? Do you have uploadable stuff? I don't know, she's muted or something. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll assume there's nothing to see. Andy. Let's take a look, okay. So we've got bicep, inner, tricep back. The the various asymmetry and bulging is not really present, but the placement is correct. 
the bulging here on this one is better. And yeah, I'd say that's probably bicep. You're probably right about that. Um, the elbow shape kind of fell apart here. So we're looking directly at elbow joint in the very back, which means we've got probably the ulnar, the ulnar line should be created right here. Yeah, you can just see it. A line directly from elbow to pinky side wrist. So that would be on one side flexors, on the other side extensors. So we can just see that divot. And I think on this side we can see that as well. Um, this one though, so this is thumb side of the elbow, that's going to be brachioradialis because it's very characteristic, creates this big shape and also kind of contributes to this divot on the back of the elbow, which we can sometimes see. Um, so I think you've got brachioradialis here, but we're not really seeing the rest on that forearm. Um, oh, there you are. Yep. There you are. Um, I'm getting like half and half divided forms for you for every single one as well. Kind of like a, a couple other people have done. Um, so make sure that you actually know where one group ends and another begins. Um, and it's going to shift as we kind of rotate around. For instance, right here in the inner forearm for that guy, we're definitely going to have all flexors except for the one uh, pronator teres, which is gonna go around the thumb side. Okay. Did you have any trouble with this, Andy, or any questions? I'm going through here. Trying to get all the groups right. So okay. I didn't... Yeah. So I didn't like watch them out or... This one looks a lot better on number 11 here because that is a more parallel shape. And I think you've got that there is a difference between what is going down the middle and wrapping around the side there. Um, what are you denoting? Is that a flexor? And then on the pinky side, what is the little green one? What was that one? Um, I forgot the name, but it was one of the three parts. Is it a big part that goes all the way to the wrist, or is it one of the little ones that wraps around the bicep? Um, you, you keep getting, like, really quiet. I think it's the one that goes really around the wrist. Around the bicep or all the way to the wrist? All the way to the wrist? Yeah, so this would be where the, the ulnar divot is, right? Pinky side to elbow. And so that would probably be where we could start to see extensors around the opposite side. I'm just like not entirely sure if that's what you're indicating or not via the drawing. But if so, then that would be correct. You can kind of see it here as well. This very, very flat part of this wrist because he's doing such weird things with his body. I believe that that's the ulnar divot again right there, because this is pinky side, and that's the side of the elbow, so probably. We're also looking directly at it here, pinky side to elbow, but it's not nearly as showcased in this particular pose, because everything's relaxed. Yeah, so generally, I mean, positions look all right, not always 100% obvious, um, we're missing latissimus a lot of the time too. So make sure you include that like right here. This one it was really needed because it creates the armpit shape. Um, and then also in this reclining figure, latissimus right there. We kind of needed it to help his armpit shape both sides right there. And on her, latissimus. And just barely visible latissimus over on this side. So you see it a lot more than you think the latissimus, even if you're looking at the front of the figure, because it helps to create the armpit. Oh. Okay. Okay. And since you've got the head right there, you know, I don't know if I included Loomis' head in the instructions or not, I'll look, but it would have been good. 
would help to space everything out and make sense of the poses. N little neck and, and Loomis head. And these are cool. So the, the clefting elbow is always a really interesting kind of situation where we've got flexors on one side, extensors on another side, and the ulnar cleft right in the middle. So you can kind of see right here, drawing a line, there's the ulnar cleft right there. Kind of creates that divoting sort of shape in addition to these smaller muscles on both sides, brachioradialis and pronator teres. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Lydia. Is Lydia here? I actually don't see Lydia in chat. don't know where she is. Um, a little hard to see because it's kind of wrinkly and we've got some weird light coming out. Let's see. Um, it looks like she might have struggled a bit with this one because the, the proportions are all over the place. We've got a very wide torso mass throughout. And then she may be treating the deltoid, the shoulder, as a bicep sometimes. I can't quite tell. Tricep looks OK but we're losing the mass at the elbow also. So this was something that I think one or two other people did. Um, we got to wrap those muscles around the elbow area. The elbow is a pretty substantial area. Um, same thing with the knee. If you guys did the same thing with the knee, I don't remember or not. But the knees and the elbows, they're pretty substantial areas. They're very important to us. If they break, we're in deep trouble. And so there's lots of muscles wrapping around the sides and through um, the knee and elbow areas. Yeah, so we got a lot of proportion problems in this one, which is a shame because the leg one seemed to go so well. So I'm not sure what changed this week, but maybe the number of apparent muscles kind of psyched her out or something. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see when, uh, when we get Lydia on the mic again. Robert, how'd it go? Cool. Yeah. That all makes sense to me. Let's see. Best guess? Yeah, <laughs> just kind of guessing on that one because all her arms are covered, but all that makes sense. Yeah. I can kind of see her left silhouette, so I just guess the right one based on the thickness there. Yeah, and I'd say you're putting everything in the place that would make sense to have it in that case. This one's cool. So what's going on here? Oh, I just never put the back on these these people. On this one? Oh, uh, the the lats? Yeah. Oh. So that that's what's missing here. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. It creates this really twisty line. Man, that's a okay. So she's rotating the shoulder area forward, then twisting the arm back. Wow, that's a a very exaggerated. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm like, is that the only thing that's missing there? Is the latissimus? I guess so. And the soft area in between, so that triangular shape in the middle would sort of be the, the leftover skin area, plus breast tissue, I suppose. Hmm, interesting. Yep, bicep, tricep. That looks like pronator teres. Is blue muscle or bone? I believe was the uh, extensors. Uh, yes. Okay. That one. Yes. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Red is brachial uh, brachioradialis. Yeah, and then like a purpley one was the pronator, and then yellow was the uh, flexors. Flexors. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing anything obviously wrong. Pretty good. Little weird on this shaping here, I'm trying to figure out. So, pronator teres would be pinky side, brachioradialis would be thumb side. So, this one would be brachioradialis, that would be pronator. But then, this is all flexors. Okay, I, it's, it's a little bit complicated. I think just the place where this triangle got defined got shifted over to the left a little bit and should just be shifted over to the right 
just a tiny bit to get the cleft back in the right spot. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I mean, generally, looks just fine. This guy's got arms that are clearly visible. Cool. Yep. Nice. Any problems or anything that you had? No, just that one dude at the top with his weird deltoid. Yeah, which, who is it? This guy? Yeah, that is pretty strange. <laughs> but it must be deltoid. It's got to be. Yeah, they meet at the same. It meets at the same place as the deltoid does. So I just assume because his humerus is like tilted forward, it's just kind of poking out, kind of weird. Yeah, I That's can. I can now see where he's gripping his leg. That we're looking at the side of his upper arm, which I don't think I could tell in the small image either, which. Yeah, it kind of cinches this, that that must be deltoid. But man, I, I had a tough time believing I was looking at the side of his arm at this position. He's just very dynamically doing crazy things with that flexibility. Is this the same guy? Uh, I, it might be. Because I'm looking at like serratus and deltoid area, and both of them have huge amounts of development there. I think it might be the same dude, just in very different lighting conditions. That dude sucks. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Um, wait a minute. Austin's is here. Did I skip Austin somehow? How did that happen? There you go. Austin. Huh. Weird. Okay. Austin. How you doing? Austin is here, right? Yeah. I see him. Hello. How'd it go? Uh, this one was pretty tough. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on, huh? Yeah, the uh, forearm is hard for me to, to figure out. I think that if you go back and watch the videos that I, I listed up too late, they make it a lot clearer by generalizing in that forearm video um, that he provided. So in this one right here, he talks about how to think about it generally and which landmarks are the most important, which I think is something I, I was a little bit scanty on when I covered it. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's worthwhile to learn all the shapes, but there are a few kind of generalizations that help, particularly that ulnar cleft on the outside and then just the cleft down the middle on the inside, which let's see if any of them are visible here. Um, I actually don't see it on any of these. Oh, there it is, right there. Sort of, she's kind of twisting her arm, but yeah. Those two in particular are, are really helpful. Actually, yeah, right here, we've got it. Oh, and this one, I don't know why I didn't catch it before. You, you seem to have done a pretty good job though. I'm sure that this was a little bit foreign and different because there's so many different shapes in the form, but these look pretty solid to me. Cool. Uh, any problems? Anything in particular? Yeah, I guess uh, trying to figure out the starting and end points was pretty difficult. For the arm? For the forearm muscles, like the, uh, the brachioradialis, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, because the starting and ending points are kind of subdermal, like they all kind of interlock so much, we think of them sort of more as a mass and a shape than about where specifically the muscle terminates because like this one in particular there it goes up there it's going to end like halfway up the humerus but we don't want to draw that halfway up the humerus it doesn't really make any sense um, same thing for a lot of these extensors and flexors they're sort of ending on the next bone up which is the humerus but we're not going to draw them doing that really so we kind of just want these different mass areas if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. The chart that I was using had, had a lot of different muscles labeled, so I was having trouble grouping them together. Yeah. Well, all of these, anything that has extensor in front of it, kind of grouped together, plus brachioradialis, just because it is the one that creates a silhouette shape and that wrapping around the bicep. That's the only reason we kind of single that one out. 
and anything that's got flexor anything by it, they're all grouped together. So flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi um, ulnaralis, you can tell that means near the ulna, near the radius. And then this one in the middle, I don't even think we talk about this muscle, just the tendon because it's very, very obvious on the underside of the wrist. Yeah. All right, man. Cool. Very good. Thank you. All right, now that was everybody. There we go. So we are going to learn about the hand this week. I believe I published the module already. Let me go ahead and make sure. Good. Okay. And definitely included the videos this time because they're very, very helpful. There we go. Structure of the hands. Okay. Um, the hands are another one that we, rather than focus on the skeleton and muscle, we kind of focus on the shapes and how to group them and what the shortcuts are. So like the foot where we didn't really go into all of the different bones of the foot and muscles of the foot, tendons of the foot, except for a, a choice few, that'll be the same kind of approach with the hand. So I've got a bunch of general kind of um, ways to think about hand structure kind of posted up here for reference. We'll talk about it more on Thursday when I do the full drawing lesson, but I put this one first because when I think about the basic hand proportions and shapes, this is definitely what I think of first every single time. Just that from the side, it's a big wedge that goes from thick to thin. And from the front, it's sort of a block, but also kind of fans out from the middle finger outward. Those two kind of, of paradigms of thinking about the hands kind of get you in the right neighborhood for hand structure in, in, in total. Then if you really want to know, here are the underlying bones of the hand the whole carpal tunnel group, uh, metacarpals, and then phalanges. That's how it all shakes out. Some of the three-dimensional construction that we'll utilize to draw the hand. Plus, in particular, I thought this was great when I found it. Someone drew a whole bunch of cylinders and then made them all fingers. And that's a really great way to visualize it. So, yeah. No matter what the flexing is, it's all just cylinders bending. Okay. Um, this one in particular I thought was important from the Proco articles um, where they talk about the difference between not just the forearm wrist and not just the palm, but this little block in between that sort of creates a transition it can give you much more believable hand to forearm transitions. And then this is all from Famous Artist Course, which is a very old reference. I got these off of James Gurney's blog um, where it's just a basic approach from general gesture to construction to loosening it all up and adding the details. So in general, this is kind of the approach. And in, in the very first video, Proko talks about um, two or three different ways to first structure the hand and then to build up all the construction. So definitely watch that. Okay, and this will be our last assignment, drawing hands, because we're out of time. In that final week, because we have a little bit of extra time, I might show some references for facial construction, but there definitely isn't going to be an assignment because we won't have that. Okay. Questions? No. Yeah? The assignment is 20 hands, 20 hands. If that is 10 people, so be it. If it's 20 different people, so be it, 20 hands. I'm also including forearm, by the way. Include the forearm with as much skeletal and muscular detail as necessary. So whatever is sort of visible. You don't have to go all the way up to the elbow, but if you want to, go for it. Because a hand without a wrist and without a forearm to attach that wrist to is kind of a weird thing. So forearm and hands. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Mm-hmm. It's about the Noko Collins like classes and Okay. When you when you finish Noko Collins classes, like like do you retake them again? If you finish a class and pass it? Well, like, I mean, like when you're done with the 
when you're done with the... When you complete a certificate? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I mean, like, if you... If you, like... Like... Doing another class and you want to do it again, like, can you retake that class? I think the process you're, calling, you're talking about is auditing. And you can, but it's up to the discretion of the instructor whether or not to allow that. You have to ask them. So I, I think that's what your your question is like. You took a course, passed it, but you want to take it again, maybe with a different instructor, maybe with the same one. I think you're talking about auditing. So you'd have to approach the instructor before the quarter to ask if you could do that. Okay. Uh, oh, Jerry's got a question. Hi, Jerry. What's your question? Uh oh, I lost it. Where did it go? There he is. in the module these ones here they are I, I don't know what you mean cuz like you want to see them there they are extensors and flexors extensors flexors I don't know what you mean Flexors on the inside, curl the fingers in. Extensors on the outside, straighten the fingers and bend the wrist upward. Well, hopefully that helps at least a little bit. I mean, look in the module because we've got all those images provided, but in particular, these videos are going to help a lot, especially the first one. Strongly recommend watching the first one because they simplify everything. Okay. All right, you guys, any other questions? All right, you guys, take it easy.